talk about Game of Thrones Season 7, Episode 2, Stormborn, which I guess you have some feelings about, but let's pour the beer first. Alright, yes, let's. So we're going to do the same deal as last week, because if you weren't here, Emily is pregnant, and so we're not going to smoke with a pregnant woman in the room, uh, but we are going to smoke after. Well, actually, she came with, so. Okay, so Sorry. no smokes. So no smokes this week. Okay, Sorry. well, you guys are out of luck. Just how it goes sometimes. Uh, next week will be all just me solo. Yeah. So I can smoke. Be plenty of smoking. <laughs> and then oh. the weeks after that, it sounds like we'll have plenty of smoking. Okay. <laughs> so Maybe you guys, I'll come back for the finale. There you yeah. go. Well, you, you're welcome back anytime. We don't, we don't mind. Uh, and people can live without fake to, or, well, real tobacco, but fake to that on the screen. Right. Um, but maybe, you know, once we're done. Uh, Discussing the episode, I'm worried this thing's gonna pop, so that's why I'm going slow. Uh, we can do a little after show like last time because I wanted to read to you guys about the Varys mermaid theory. I, I want to hear about that. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh my goodness. so we'll we'll do the episode as normal, and then we'll kind of BS afterwards like last time. Yep. And I, like I will read. Uh, I found a nice little page discussing the theor the fan theory that Varys is a mermaid, oh not mermaid, because he's. Not well, a maid, he's but. not really. Well, we don't know if it is man either. That's true. All right. Do you want me to do it? Just I got it. Here. See, here. I knew I was gonna do that. <laughs> it didn't hit the it, camera. Doesn't make it less so fun. It's, well, it's just you know you don't want to put your eye out or anything. Or you you weren't facing your eye. Well, I know. It's fine. But, okay. But it couldn't hit the camera. Yeah, could have hit the camera. So this is. Valar de Harris, which is a Belgian triple. This one came out a year ago, so it's one of their more recent ones. I think it's in October. I'm trying to think, because I know they had the most recent one uh, was the one we had last time, right. Bend the Knee, and then before that it was the... Oh. So, yeah, there's some, oh, some, some cre chunky. creatures. There's some definite stuff floating yeah. around my beard. Uh, I have mango soda in it. Yeah, well, yeah. Mango reminds me that we got to pull out the bottle of uh, Senor Cerveza. Yeah, and smell yeah, it. We're just going to smell it this week. week. Yeah, so I don't even want to smell it. Usually that's been like week three, but you're going to be gone next time, so I yeah, guess the time after. Six. I don't know. It we'll, 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 doesn't matter. It doesn't, it's not going here into this year anyway. Yeah, so I think this was, I forget what the, the name of the one they had, but it had like the picture of the comet on it. Uh, it might have been called Seven Kingdoms or something like that, and then this was the one before that, so this okay. might have been like a year and a half ago. A year ago. and a half ago. Oh, good. It's like, actually not too bad. I don't mind when there's chunks floating around in professional beer. Because you know they, that they know what they're doing? Yeah, when that happens to my beer, it's kind of like, well, I should have let it sit in the secondary a little longer <laughs> yeah, or something, exactly. right? Yeah, exactly. They did it intentionally. Or do you ever get to the end of a keg and it just like comes out like a milkshake? That's yes. so gross. It's like, well, that's, I'm done, I guess. I'm like, not that last that. glass was my last glass. Well, and it's <laughs> terrible, too, because if you suck that, that, that shit through the, the kegerator, it's like you just want to throw out your tubing at that point. You can't clean that. Like, well, sure you can. I always fill up, whenever, t I always fill up my kegs afterwards and pressurize them and yeah. run it through the thing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a good, but still, it's like, that, that's gross. It's just sanitizing. I don't know. No, not the sanitizer, the, the sediment. I don't want like a line full of sediment. Oh, yeah, that's why you sanitize it. Oh, yeah. But it was still there at one point. Right. Well, I, I did. I, I completely replaced my lines in my kegerator a couple months ago. Oh, so that's now you have I, a newfound appreciation I for do. clean lines. Well, I, no, I've cleaned the lines just to make sure everybody's on it. Like, I wasn't just running <laughs> the same beer through there for five years. But, you know, after X number of years, you, gotta, you just got to get yeah, yeah, they, they, they just corrode. know that they corrode pretty easily. Well, they're not corrode, it just They, they just, get gross after. Yeah. Yeah, there's only so much you can clean up. Anyway, uh, Stormborn, so... I like the episode. I didn't have strong thoughts about it, but it sounds like you yeah, have strong thoughts. So let's hear it. I, I, know, I just did not like the I guess I was disappointed. Oh, we have a negative Nelly on oh, the show this I week. Know. Well, I was disappointed because I felt like this is... Oh, this is... 
essentially as close as we're going to get to a filler episode. And I felt like okay. we kind of had one last week setting everything up for stuff to happen. And right at the end, we had some stuff happen. So you're feeling the X number of episodes to go fresh. I, we have, what, five episodes left. Yeah. And nothing has happened so far. In ret- I mean, in the grand scheme of things, things have been set in motion, but right. nothing has happened so far. And if I only have five episodes left, stuff had better be happening. Okay, so I hear what you're saying, and I don't disagree, but I don't think you can really evaluate that till you see the whole picture. I know, but right now I want to be pissed about it. So. But it's like this whole mid-season anxiety, and it, you know, it's like... I know, I know, they... They see some grand picture, but I just feel like spending five minutes on a sex scene that can't happen. Okay, we'll get to that. Because I'm with you. We'll get like, to that. That could have been just as well spent on the Dothraki taking King's Landing or something. Right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if we're talking individual scenes they could have cut, yes, and we'll get there. But, you know, I feel like that's the case with just about every show, is that you get mid-season, especially when you get into the last season or two, and there's this kind of viewer anxiety of, are they going to get there? And it's like, that's how, and you can only evaluate that after the fact. Right. So, like, I watched, I was a big Battlestar Galactica fan, and I felt like when we got to the end, I know not everybody feels this way, but I really liked the way that it ended. And so then when I rewatched the series, I, I was fine with the pace of the final season. Or there's something like Lost, where you just got to the end of this complete, you know, what the hell was that disaster? Uh, we just finished The Leftovers, and I think there was some of that going there, but then you got to the end, and it was like, okay, now I have the whole picture of what they were doing, and I'm, I'm fine with it. And I'm watching, tw I'm a big Twin Peaks fan, so we're about halfway through this 18-episode revival right now, and, and people online are freaking out about the same type of thing, and I think... I'm not disagreeing with you. We might get to the end of the season I'm and say, what were they viewer. doing? Is that what you mean? Yeah. You gotta wait. <laughs> it's like you're, you're in... You have to think of it as you're watching a seven-hour movie. And right. you just watch the second hour of a seven-hour movie. All right. You well, can't well, evaluate it that way. Yeah, look at uh, it that way. Right. Which, that doesn't mean that you get to the end of the seven-hour movie. Maybe you look back an hour or two and say, well, that, that was a waste of time. Entirely yeah. possible. But I, I just think you gotta. This, I, I feel like, especially at this show, there's so many moving pieces, and there's this kind of, well, how are they gonna do this and this and this? Right. Well, let's see what they do, and then judge them accordingly. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'll trash them at the end of it if they. And if it. all of a sudden they were in King's Landing, taking over, killing Cersei in this episode, like. Well, that's the I other think thing. Then it's you're that, gonna be really worried yeah, about well, what's gonna the happen. The timeline is very year. compressed. Like, we're flying from here to there. It's like, I will send a raven to Jon Snow. I am Jon Snow, and I just got a raven. And I will, you know, and it's, it's like we are, we're pretty much ignoring geography in the show. Right. Well, uh, yeah. Which, watching this, I kind of am starting to understand why Winds of Winter is taking forever. Because Martin will not just ignore geography. Right. He knows that it takes a month to get from Winterfell to the wall. Exactly. And so for him to get from or from Winterfell all the way over to Dragonstone, yeah, it's got to be what? So he's like, well, Arya twisted her ankle, so her speed's cut in half, so damn it, that scene's not going to work. Let's <laughs> go rewrite the whole book. And, you know, that's what he's been doing for five years, is that he's trying to get everybody back together. Right. And the show is just like, yeah. <laughs> we're all we back go. together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... We'll get into like scene by scene or location by location, but what I do like about where we're at is that the show is more or less in sync at this point. All of our different storylines are, with maybe one or two exceptions, are interacting with each other, um, directly or indirectly. Everybody's kind of on the same page about who's maneuvering where, right. and so there is a lot of convergence going on. Mm -hmm. uh, so. I don't know, where should we start? Uh, Dragonstone's the big thing. Maybe we'll, we'll circle around that. No, I think that's fine. We can... Okay, well we can start at Dragonstone. So we, or maybe we can start there. 
we'll come back to a second half of it or something. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so we have Varys versus Danny, which I really like that scene. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Interesting line that you guys probably caught of the I don't want to be queen over the ashes. Who does want to be king over the ashes? Little yeah. Okay, so we're starting to bring back into view this little finger versus Varys mm -hmm. uh, thing, which which I've said before on the show and elsewhere that that's what this series is fundamentally about. That's the central right. philosophical conflict of the series. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting because they're kind of on the same side formally at this point. Um, because especially if this alliance takes place, Varys and Littlefinger will be on the same team, but uh, definitely not on the same philosophical team. Right. right. Not from the same mindset. Yeah. Uh, speaking of teams, it just seems like I hope we don't do too much to like make it seem like this is going to be a battle. Because oh, is, is there any doubt that Cersei's going down? Like is, she's she's like a team that. In the NFL, you got to the Super Bowl, but you got there by your quarterback, your second-string quarterback, your star tackle. All these guys got injured in the championship right, game. They yeah, all broke right. their legs. You know, and so it's like, you're there. Right. You know, you're, right. you're starting your third-string quarterback off the practice squad, but you're in the Super Bowl. That's basically her right now. Right. Yeah. So she's, yeah. But now I'm nervous for the, I mean, I'm a little nervous for the Dragons. Oh, because they were watching the last Hobbit movie and they, they decided to, they decided to, to take yeah. a cue out of that. I'm surprised it hadn't been done before. I mean, they have bows and arrows. They have the crossbows. Yeah. I mean, you think they would have thought of this maybe a while ago? It's not the worst idea in the world. You have to have good aim, though. Yeah. Right? I mean, they're yeah, fast. Yeah, they're flying around. Right. It's not like they're going to be And how, how do you do target practice for that one? That's true. Yeah. I was... So I was a little disappointed in that because I was hoping that Kyber's big plan was going to be we're going to bring out zombie Gregor and just launch him at the dragons, <laughs> which would have been dumb but kind of cool at the same time. Like, see, when maybe they, that'll be their last day. Yeah, exactly. Right? When they brought him down there, I thought maybe he had like put the bones together and used the same like Gregor thing to oh, like, yeah, that? create some weird... Yeah, I kind of thought that maybe he was going to like revive. Yeah, like revive, like, or not revive, but just like... dragon Yeah, or something. Machine and I was just, like, dragon, maybe. Yeah. Yes, but, whatever. I don't know. It, so, I'm okay with the bow and or the, the crossbow, because you can get cheesy pretty fast if they go down that road. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, but anyway, I did really like uh, Varys and Danny. Um, I liked uh, her line when uh, they walk into Mel Saunders there and say, "Well, today we decided to pardon the people who chose the wrong king." It's right. Like, yeah. Which is the yeah for Mel It's almost like a fresh start for her. Uh huh. Even if even though it's in the same place that she started before. You know, same physical. Right. The well, same physical location at Dragonstone, right? Right. And so, yeah, I, I think she's going to have a really important role in terms of smoothing all of this out. Uh, but Varys is not a fan right. of her. No, wasn't a red well, priest the one that? Oh, you're right. Yeah. Like, took off all Fished that. Fished him out yeah. of the sea, caught the merman, and. And oh, to, to, oh yeah. is that what happened? We'll see. Oh, I don't know. So I won't read the series. We'll read it. Yeah. But it had something to do with his past. Right. But yeah. also her more recent past that she was with Stannis and he knows all that. Right. History. Right. And, and let's not the forget. The things that he did to yeah. Robert's bastard son, you know, to gender. Right. And let's not forget that the whole John is a Targaryen thing, we know that at this point, Bran knows that, but that's all sitting out there still. True. So none of the characters are aware of this at this point. Outside of Bran, who we didn't see this week, but... Yeah. I don't think we're going to see much of him. He's on the sled. He's going to, he's got he probably has like one big line before the end. Okay. Like, They're coming! That's what he's going to say. She's your aunt! That's... <laughs> I, I made a big, like, significant line. If, if like, Bran's only role in the series is to say they're coming, like, that's going to be a disappointment. <laughs> but, you know, thanks, Bran. He's going to be the out. one who wakes up and say, 
they breached the wall or something yes. like that. Like he's gonna be the one that says it. Or maybe Bran will find a way to where, because we know he can kind of like when he dreams, he can go different places. Maybe he'll infiltrate John's dream or something, and he'll do some crazy stuff there. Well, there's stuff some. There. Uh, hmm. He's got. It's you know, like that's kind of like the war game thing, right? That they talk a lot about more in the book. Than, right. You know. Okay, so then we also saw this war council. So on Danny's side, maybe we should just go through who's on whose side right now. So Danny has Doran. Maybe we'll get to that because that didn't end well. She has half of the Iron Islands, the uh, Theon uh, Yara side of them. Mm -hmm. right. Of the Iron Island, she has Dorn, or I said Dorn. She has uh, the the Tyrells, and she maybe has John. We'll see how that swims out. So then, and then Cersei has herself, and a really big crossbow, and, and maybe a really a, big man, right? A really big man, and maybe a few lords who like Randall Tyrley, who's well, they decide with her. There wasn't even like a harumph, harumph, harumph from those guys. They were just like, um, This isn't uh, going to yeah. go well. <laughs> and she has Jamie, who's not quite jumping ship just yet, but sure looks like he's ready to. <laughs> so they have this war council. I thought Elena's line was good, where she, they won't obey you unless they fear you. And I think that's going to be a big theme of this, of really the rest of the series, is Danny's going to have to realize that to actually rule this, she's going to have to go down some road she doesn't want to go down. Because mm -hmm. that's the price of ruling. Mm hmm. Exactly. You know, it's like presidential politics. Anybody who gets that job has probably done some things that make them unqualified for that job. Right. You know, right. to get to that level, yeah. you have some major skeletons in your closet. Right. And Danny's going to have to realize that, okay, a few atrocities along the way might be the price of the Iron Throne. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I thought the strategy, though, I know Elena wasn't on board. I thought it was pretty good. Suddenly, uh, unsullied to Castle Lee Rock. Like, who's at Castle Re Lee Rock right now? Nobody? Right. You know, there's probably like, some uncle or somebody there who's... Not right. even, wasn't it just Uncle Kevin? I think it was just the... Is Uncle Kevin alive right, right now? He was in the sept. Okay. So he's gone. I knew he was dead in the books. I wasn't... So there is no... Yeah, so it's it's somebody it's less so than cousin... Lenny Lannister. Yeah, Lenny Lannister. <laughs> Lannister is in charge of Castle <laughs> Rock. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so he, I don't think he'll pose much of a threat. He might. You know, yeah. Know. So... I mean, it's a good strategy. Let let Cersei have the Iron Throne, and that's it. Uh, and then let me see. We are, well, we actually kind of got to the end of the Dragonstone stuff because uh, then we had Elena and Danny in their conversation. Okay, and then we had the weirdest sex scene maybe that's ever been filmed. But there wasn't. Well, wow, there was some stuff, but I, I, yeah. So That's, I feel like we could have lost that scene. I feel like yeah. uh, when they started this love story in season We were all like, four, he doesn't have any balls. Where's uh, this going to go? Now was, we know where it's going to go. Uh, and uh, just unnecessary. Just gratuitous. Just, yeah, but not even gratuitous well, in it, like a, oh, that's so sexy. Yeah, no, it was like... Well, yeah, it could be... It should just be like, okay, yes, there's this romantic piece. They're sad. They're going to be separated. Great. Kiss. Kiss. Goodbye. Be done. Like, there was no need for... Yeah. Well, because now that they've done that, he's gonna die. Right. Like, that kind of... Like, it's like the red X of death. It's like we're in a red suit on Star Trek. Like, yeah. Well, and the other thing is... you leave, you die. Just thematically, like, the tone they were going for in that scene is this doomed romance. But the problem is, there's not a single person watching it, like... What's his dick gonna look like? That's the only question anybody was wondering when you were watching that scene. No one was invested in the emotion. It was just, what is this horror show going to even look show like? Us it. And then they didn't even show it to us. <laughs> but we just have to assume that there's nothing. It's like, how is this gonna work? Nobody was invested in the scene. <laughs> right. We were all asking the same set of questions. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unnecessary. Right. Yeah, so I 
HBO needing to throw in some more boobs. I see yes. every, every other episode. Right? Every other episode. Not in episode one, so we do it in episode two. Yeah. Not in episode three, we'll do it in episode four. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I still don't understand how that worked. Because, like, doesn't your testosterone she drop or something? Hey, you know what? I'm not sure on the whole. <laughs> I have not okay. done a lot of research. You got two weeks. You're not gonna be here next week, so I came back from Mars. I'm gone. Format. I'm in okay. Canada. I'm the issue in the middle of Pull nowhere. Pull out your phone. You know, you do some research. No, there's on that. no phone up there. You know, <laughs> ask around. See what they call nine one one up there. <laughs> Just see what they think of Like, hey, you know any Canadians about balls? <laughs> Where's the unsullied contingent of the Mounties? It's so bring me to a moose. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh my. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, that, that was something else. Alright. Uh, we already talked about Searsail for the most part. I'm trying to look and see if there's anything else we have here. Oh, um, she just yeah, did that nobody one is thing. Really, she and it was sad to see the throne room like, here's these people I have, it's like half full and then like you said, nobody's very enthusiastic about it. Right. Yes, well, I want to support yeah. you. Well, and you have to assume that because they've, half of them had probably talked to or had a letter from Olen and Tyrell already. Yeah. So now it's like, hey, I need you. And they're like, yeah, but this person needs me. And the last time that we fought, you know, people like you, we kind of sided with the other people anyways. Right. And no, it, it's the 2016 election. She's Hillary Clinton. And everybody else is trying to just decide if they hate the other guy more. Like, nobody likes her. <laughs> nobody wants her to be queen. But it's just that we hate the other side more. It's the series from 20 years ago. Who knew it was going to perfectly converge with an election 20 years in the who, future? Yeah, who knew that? Yeah. yeah. That's a stretch. It's a stretch. That's not a stretch. She's totally Hillary Clinton. Danny Targaryen. Okay. They don't so know Danny, her. DT, DT. <laughs> He totally called it. You okay. sold, done. Are so that ever? part's a stretch. But the psychology of it, of do we hate the other we, side we, more? We exactly, more. Right. exactly. That part I get. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, Citadel. So we have Jorah and Sam. Right. Yeah. Uh, Jorah Having is, some fun. Yes. He has six months before he goes insane. Good ten years to live. So a little good news, bad news scenario. And then Sam apparently read one chapter in one book and is like, He's going no, 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 grayscale's curable. Yeah. Which, it, I, you know what? I, I don't know. I don't know. I kind of was Sam on this one. Like, if the cure is put on some heavy gloves and scrape it off, you know, you guys could have given this another shot. Instead of just like, we're just like, not going to cure grayscale. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, there's probably, I mean, there's probably a lot less tough people than Jorah Mormont who get grayscale that they were looking yeah. at. Where it's like, hey, listen, eight-year-old girl, we're going to rip off your skin right now. Like, that's, that's not going to happen. That's true, yeah. Or anybody else except for a knight who... But when the alternative is death... Thing. I mean, that's a pretty good selling point. Yeah, but pain now versus death in a little bit for some people is an easier choice. That's true. Like, I mean, when somebody starts ripping my skin off, you be like, you know, I think, I think I'll risk I'll it. I'll just I'll, die. I'll risk that's it. That's fine. There's, there's probably a lot of people who are like, I'll risk it. I'll risk it instead of ripping off the skin off my chest. Like, right. Yeah. Uh, one more thing I want to talk about with Sam, but first... Was that not the grossest and best cut that you've ever seen? To the porridge or whatever yes. he was eating? Oh. Yeah, I was like, oh wait, that's he's gonna dive in there now? And I was like, oh wait, what? Oh, <laughs> oh. That, oh. That's, that <laughs> looks like some nasty like, soup. That's, that's like gravy, oh! <laughs> they, you know what, but between that disturbing sex scene and Sam scene, they also had a pretty good transition color-wise between the book and her skin. That That's was true. That yeah. was a decent transition. The editor earned his paycheck. He did. Week. He did a good, uh, I mean, he did a decent job of, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, fans of the sci-fi Christian on the podcast know I'm not a fan of soup. I hate soup. Well, I think, <laughs> I just 
I love. I had a friend in college who hated soup. Well, it's so gross. All soup. Creamy yeah, soup. soup? Yeah. Especially creamy soup. Were you watching that tonight? That doesn't mean that you don't like it. I love a good creamy soup, Ooh. like a chicken wild rice. Yeah. Oh. So, like any soup, it's like, well, don't you like beef soup or stew or something? Well, no, just give me the cow, you know, just give me the steak. Like, right. you take a perfectly good steak and you pour it in, you just dump it into boiling water and you call it soup. Like, that's disgusting. You don't like yeah, that's what poor people oh. eat. That's what well, we I'm eat. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you get those student loans paid off. <laughs> yeah, 20 years from now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So, oh, oh though. Yeah, Sam's gonna cure Jorah. And... Sam's gonna cure Jorah, and one of the. So we're gonna talk about a fan theory later on. One of the fan theories is that Sam goes to the Citadel and he writes the book that we're reading, kind of all of Bilbo and Frodo mm -hmm. from Lord of the Rings. Oh, so like he's never gonna go back. He's just. Well, no. Event. He might go back, but eventually he he's writes so this history. Down, right? Okay, so we, I think that that was kind of hinted at tonight when uh, the Grand uh, Archmaster is saying, well, I'm going to write the history of King Robert I and all the wars and everything, and he says, well, it needs a more poetic title, A Song of Ice and Fire. Mm. Sam's uh, going to write A Song of Ice and Fire. Are you hear it? I, I, I like it. I like it. that. Because yeah. I mean, no, Sam doesn't die, and that makes me happy too. So. <laughs> right. He's the only one we know doesn't die. All right, sold. <laughs> yes. Okay, so Arya. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, last week everybody was uh, a titter about Ed Sheeran. 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 What's wrong with you? <laughs> I've never heard of it. He doesn't that. have access to popular culture. He's oh, I have, have access. Have no, no, I have <laughs> access. I I discern. I, I, I choose not to. <laughs> So I don't know who. Can I, I just say that it's impressive that you've never heard an Ed, Ed Sheeran song? Like, I, well, I don't know if I've heard it. Like I might have heard a commercial or something. I certainly never saw it. Oh, I Wikipedia'd him, and I saw that he's uh, British, yes. and he sings. Yep. That is true. That's that's so about. We're gonna have to do that. Is he like in a boy band? In the no, no. it's just him. It's just him. We're he's gonna have to. I'll look up some of his popular songs. I don't want to hear it. Well, just to see if you've heard it. Like, that's all I care about. Oh, okay. Well, Just to be like, oh, yeah, that one? I don't like that one. That's what you're going to say. Right. But that's fine. Yeah, so I it didn't bother me when I was watching, but I am kind of annoyed after the fact. That and they we brought don't, somebody Yeah, we don't need a boy band guy so in Game of Thrones. I think I saw that, like, six months ago, that he was going to be in an episode. It's not like he played a significant role. He sang a little song in the album. Right, and it was a very peaceful scene. Maybe... Maybe it was going to be a completely different scene and she was going to kill everybody. Yeah. But then Aaron Sheeran was like, I'll pay you a million dollars to be in this scene. And they're like, all right. And he's like, but nobody can die. So they had to make it all happy. I guess. I don't know. Uh, so we missed that controversy. I still don't care that much because I, I still don't know who he is. It I know, yeah, I know Anyways, who he is. Anyways, I didn't week. recognize him last week, but... It's not a big deal for me. Right, right. I'll, I'll get on that. Oh, yeah, but I was just saying to Ben on the way over here that I was like, well, with Arya, she said she's going to kill Cersei. I get yeah. that she wants to be on the move, but why isn't she going to go to Winterfell? Like, why, why isn't she going to yeah. see her family? That was and now we learn the answer because she saw the know. Were, And how great was it to have Hot Body come back? Yeah. Yeah, that was that cute. Was it's that was adorable. Nice. There's one thing we like on Game of Thrones. It's adorable. Right. <laughs> Where's Patrick Payne? Right. He's Where is he actually? He's, he's, uh, he's, he was with uh, Bri Brienne. Last Today? We saw him last no, but he, that's where he's been. So he oh, must be at Winterfell. So he's just there? Yeah, I mean, we've seen a few shots of Brienne, but she hasn't really done it. She hasn't done yeah. it. She's just sitting there. Uh, Sam is going to kill Jorah. Yeah, but she's going to kill Jorah. Yeah, she's going to kill Jorah. 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 She's going to yeah, yeah, that was awesome. I've been waiting for Nymeria to come back. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess one, we right? all thought that she would eventually right. show up again. And the first time Arya's shown any real emotion in like four seasons. Yes. Right, like sincere. Yeah. So and that. I think that was even more poignant because she was emotionless when she was talking to Hot Pie. Right. Just. Even trying to have a conversation was not even capable of doing it. Right. And I think that they, the director probably did that on purpose, as to like 
hey, your next scene is going to be super emotional, so you're going to need to not show any emotion in this scene. Yeah. That's probably how that conversation went down, but I think it worked out really well. Yeah, but then the way it was a really good performance, because you could see she's almost she just shuts it down. Right. So she's re her character's still really at this crossroads of, mm -hmm. is there anything left? Yeah. Um, and I think a couple of things to point out, though, is that, so where they left Hot Pie is where they killed Lady, mm -hmm. and that's where Nymeri ran away. So Nymeri right. actually isn't gone well, anyway, she's made a few actually. friends. Yeah. Well, she's made some friends, and that's uh, brought that's brought to fruition in the books too, as they talk about right. um, gang of wolves doing whatever. Yeah. So, I guess I wasn't surprised by that. But right, um, it's interesting that she hasn't Nymeria hasn't gone that far or trekked out from where she was not left or abandoned, where she ran away from. Right. She's just kind of hanging out there and. Um, Emma and I were talking about this while you were in the bathroom. Her Arya's last line after Nymeria walks away, or it's like, that's not her. It's not. It's not not Nymeria. It is Nymeria. It's just that's not her personality to follow somebody. Okay. She needs to make the choice herself. That's because right. that's what I was asking. I was like, well, she said right. it's not her. So does she think it's not Nymeria? Right. Like, just. So not by process of elimination. <laughs> but no, no, no. A wolf that is bigger than you is definitely Nymeria. Right. And they all didn't kill you, so that's definitely Nymeria. So who's alive from the wolves right now? So we have... Nymeria and... and uh, ghost. 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 Uh, is Grey Wind still alive? No, he sacrificed no. himself. Yep. And Shaggy Dog Shaggy and Rick and I are wherever they yeah. are. Everybody's dead. Yeah. Which, Rickon's another one where he's going to come back at some point. He's dead. Rick? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my no, God. Are you serious right now? <laughs> I don't want him to come back from the you. dead. I wanted him to come back and have more of a role. You're right. But he died. I kind of forgot about that. Okay, yeah. so go with that. still going to watch season six again so I, uh, you yeah. don't look like a fool. I know. I'm show. sorry. That's, that was a, that was a flaw. <laughs> well, sorry, Rickon. Yeah, he didn't. Because he ran oh, straight. Yeah, 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 he didn't zigzag. Didn't zigzag. He got, he got a zigzag. <laughs> got a zigzag irregularly. Uh, I don't know if you hear Annie, was, my wife, was watching. She doesn't want to be on the videos that she watches with us. She had the best line when uh, Sam was doing the Jorah searchers. She goes, we should just get Ramsey to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Ramsey would love that job. Exactly. It's like how you turn us. shouldn't have killed it. Yeah, yeah. Good, you turn yeah. evil to good. You turn right. evil to something. Right. You could be the, the grayscale surgeon of Westeros. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, just get any of the bulletins. They're the flayed men. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's probably flayers still in uh, wherever their hall is. I don't think there's many bulletins left at this point. Yeah, but I bet one of them's a flayer. Yeah, why not? <laughs> All right, so Winterfell gets a pair of ravens. We have the raven from Dragonstone. Yeah. And then we have the raven from Sam, mm -hmm. which was sent last week, which is, you know, our timeline's kind of out of whack at this point. But that's okay. okay. Nobody, nobody cares. Nobody Sorry, cares. can I just say one more thing about Arya? No. It will just well, I'm going to anyway. No, I'm just anticipating for next week. It's going to be interesting because Arya thinks that she's going to Winterfell to see John, her beloved right. brother, and instead she's going to be greeted by her sister. So or does she keep going to Winterfell, or does she say, "Well, Arya doesn't want to be led, so I'm not going to be led, and I'm going to go." Uh -huh. You know, does the whole incident with Arya with Nymeria? Put her back south again. Right. Mm, she could have good. some incident, yeah, where it yeah. turns her back south. And True. Though either way, yeah. That's her, and that's been her storyline is she's so close and she's just um, not there, right? right? Yeah. yeah. And eventually, hope, uh, hopefully that'll either come to fruition or she'll die outside the gates of yeah. her family's house or something, you know? Something like that. No, you're, that's fine. That's a, that's a good observation. Yeah, because, you know, how is, well, Red Wedding Part 2 or something, she'll get, like, within five feet of Winterfell and everybody will die. Right. Don't <laughs> say that. Okay, so John is going to Dragonstone, uh, which I liked. I, I like the di the power dynamics that play in Winterfell, because, again, Sansa calls him out in front of everybody, mm -hmm. which he told her not to do. Littlefinger was sitting there, he's like, He's not happy, but then he is happy at the prospect of Sansa being the right. one in charge. 
Uh, John and Littlefinger are not friends. So there's a lot of subtle power dynamics taking place in Winterfell mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And you know what I thought? What I thought of, so John choked him out and was like, touch my sister, I'll kill you, right? Yeah. But at the same time, right now, technically, uh, she is the Lady of Winterfell, and he is the Lord of the Vale. Right. And if the North needs to come together, then... So you're that, saying they could be married by the time John gets I'm back. saying that something like that could happen, absolutely. Oh. Now, Sansa's hopefully not... She would have been stupid enough to do something like that before she met Littlefinger. Oh, somebody pointed something out. I, read, I saw this on the, online last week with pictures to prove it's true. Sansa's hairstyle last week was identical to Cersei's in season one. Oh. Like the way she had her braid along the back and everything. Really? Like, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll try and find it in pictures. But That's it, really it's, cool. Yes. Okay. So she, she is really, you know, is she? would she do it to be dumb? No, but she might do it out of security might, power or something like especially that. Especially if they get some word back and John did something dumb and she's like, well, then I'm taking power in my own hands. Exactly. And now Littlefinger and I are joined together and, yep. And now Littlefinger will get what he wants. And yes. Well, get a step closer at least. A yeah. step closer to the Iron Throne. Mm. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see yeah. how things go. No, I like that theory. Mm. Interesting. Alright, then finally we have the whole ship back to Dorne. Didn't go so well. Alright. I thought this was a little so, over the top. I... Okay, so I have questions. So... One ship rolls up, and one ship rolls out, and there yeah. is a whole lot of fire coming from somewhere else so that we don't get to see. Right. It wasn't from the ship, though. I mean, just the direction yeah, that it's coming from. I agree. Wasn't from the ship. So either they're really good at ship building in the in Pike, which they are, but it was Pike versus Pike ships, so that should even out. Right. And that was a lot of fire. Mm -hmm. Like, that's more fire than they brought to the Battle of Slaver's Bay at right. the end when Danny took over and started storming the ships with their dragons. And, like, you know? some of those scenes that we saw, like, they were being flung from a long distance. Yeah, from somewhere. So I don't know they like if they so. just were like, we don't have enough money to like. We're only going to show you ships. one ship, but pretend there's other. Right, ships. pretend yeah. there's a million ships, so we're going to show you one. Or if, when he traveled around the world to uh, Azai, he learned some crazy stupid power, and now can throw fire from the sky or something like that. No, I think it's more that the show has decided. We're going to take some narrative shortcuts to get where we need to go. The point of this scene is that uh, X, Y, and Z die, and we're just going to make it look cool, which is not as satisfying as where we were in the early no. seasons. I mean, you're on crazy eyes, like, wow, that guy has some issues. Yeah. But it, yeah, I mean, well, they had to create a new enemy. Right. Because Ramsey's dead, you need a new enemy. You already hate Cersei, we already all do that, but now we need a new, fresh enemy. We need our new crazy yeah. enemy in there. Right. Yeah. It just... I mean, it was it was fine, and I think it was a payoff, uh, and it was something that happened, and as, as you were saying, there's a lot of setup here. And now we've kind of had our first big Game of Thrones death moments, because, what, Yara's dead. No, uh, Yara's not dead. Not yet, but probably. She's you think that he's going to take her captive? Sure. Okay, so she's... But all the Sand Snakes and yes. Doran Lady is dead. So... Well, is she dead? Or they just took her captive to her? Well... Yeah, bring her there's a little ambiguity. Right, because he said he's bringing a gift to Cersei. Is that part of that? That's true. Okay. And he's collecting That's... little, you know, her enemies. That's back. true. Or he could just as well bring both of those back to Danny and say, Hey, your ship is destroyed. Here are the people that were on those ships. 
Now I'm the only one who has ships, so you either marry me or you don't get to Westeros. That's true. It's also another good play for him. Because uh -huh. he doesn't really care what queen he marries. Though I think the Danny's forces are landed on Westeros at this point. Well, they're on Dragonstone, but that's not... No, I, I think her... I know she's on Dragonstone, but I think all the her army is actually on Westeros. Yeah, like, where's the Dothraki Oh, right that's now? true. We didn't see him on Dragonstone. I'm not for sure, but Dragonstone's not that big. So I kind of And that's true. When they scaled up in the rain, it's not like we saw a bunch of right. people standing around. Plus, the Unsullied and the Dothraki are off to Castle Rock. So we know that she, this yeah. wasn't her whole fleet. Right. Right. But, yeah. But there's a decent chunk of it. So... At least the Sand Snakes for sure are dead. There's nobody shedding any tears about that. Uh, I, Especially when I thought that was funny they had to recast one of them. <laughs> well, it's like, really? You couldn't convince somebody to come back for an episode? Just, like, just one day. Just, just one, one day. day. Yeah. It's probably five days of filming, but right. it's like, just five days? No, I'm above that. Like, yeah. So, I guess to wrap it up, I hear what you're saying about, you know, it's, it's slow, but I like that things are in sync. It feels like we're converging, so I'm okay with it for now, but reserving the right to come over to your side if we get seven episodes in and we're still just dancing. Wait, I mean, are you going to say something about Theon? Oh yeah, let's talk uh, about Theon for a second. Yeah, he uh, has a shitty life. He is, I guarantee you, going to die doing something like he did for Sansa. Mm -hmm. Step like he'll step in front of something, he'll find his courage at the very last second and Have like, to make do something. Yeah, he'll sacrifice himself in a heroic moment that nobody will remember. Right. But that's the way he's gonna die eventually. It's hard to be too mad at him for this one though. Right. He, was, he wasn't gonna beat Euron. No. And Yara and Yara was going to die if he took another step. Yeah, and, exactly. And, and, yeah, you just to watch the... She just started having sex down. in front of him, so... Which is, Great. Nobody's nice to Theon. No. Poor the, Theon. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's your sis, like, I mean, for anybody, like, yeah. It's just, yeah. The show just shits on Theon at this point. <laughs> like, you're gonna have a terrible life. Remember when he had an awesome life in season mm -hmm. one? Where it was just like... He was living the high life, yeah. He didn't know that that was gonna be it. That was it. Go you invade one Winterfell. Just yeah, just one Winterfell. Winterfell. <laughs> yep. It will, it will, yeah, just be interesting to see exactly where he ends up. At, and I agree with you, it, it is gonna be some kind of moment like that where he dies, but yeah. what exactly? So, or, so overall, you're gonna, yeah. I think it was good that Danny got dealt her first blow, and we'll see how she deals with that now. Yes. Whether mm -hmm. she's going to become her father or a true leader. Exactly. At this point, right? Because mm -hmm. she has to decide between the two, and she's being yelled at in a million different directions. I mean, right. my God, you have Melisandre, you have Tyrion, you have Varys, and you have. Elena, Elena yeah. all screaming at you to do something different. You just got to make up your mind. I can't even imagine doing that. Right. Yeah, yeah. she's gonna. I think she's gonna have to try and straddle the line between the Mad King and the benevolent love leader that she seems to want to be. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's gonna wishy wash either mm -hmm. way, depending on the episode, right? Yeah. All right. So we'll uh, we'll cut to the close here, and then we'll come back and learn about how Vari's is a merman. So excited. And uh, somebody requested to see the screen, so maybe I'll spin the camera around first here, quick. Oh, sure. Um, so we'll do, do that. Do that in the extras, that way everybody sticks around. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. We'll, we'll, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll go to the end and then we'll talk about it. So if you want to know how Varys is a merman, stick around. All right, so that's all for now. I'm Ben DeBorrow. Emily Kirkwall. And side by Christian, goodbye. here. Uh, for those of you stuck around, so you want to see the screen. Let's just see here. You got to take it off and bring it behind the couch. Then. That's true. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take you guys over here and 
So we're spinning. There's the, my beautiful 125 inch screen, which I really enjoyed the fact that this show is, is filmed in HD. Oh yeah, a little, little perspective. That's that's here. perfect. Yeah. Six foot tall man. Right. So, because I watch a lot of old stuff, and you know I, I enjoy that on here, but you watch a movie from the 20s and you don't exactly get the whole HD experience in the same way. So it's kind of nice to watch something filmed in HD. Right. All right. So let's see. I, I might crack open another beer here and then yeah, do a refill. Yeah. Serious. I got all the sediment in mine here. Well, that's so you're okay. gonna save it? No, I'm not saving this bottle. No, I think I already have one. All right, everyone. So Varys is a merman. <laughs> I'm so excited. You have no idea. Ah, uh, so fan theories are kind of fun because they're like conspiracy theories, but dumber. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So. This is a site called Tinfoil Fan Theory. So I actually read about this years ago. Um, which one are you looking for? Uh, the clown shoes. It's behind those cans. Oh, okay. Right, we got to deal with the beer first. You're in the after show, so don't expect professional behavior. Because <laughs> we gave you so much during the regular show. That's right. Uh, all right. So Tinfoil Fan Theories. Uh, now, some fan theories are good, like when they're actually based on evidence, like oh, all John is a Targaryen thing. We, uh, most people knew that. I knew, I, I was on board with that theory before a single episode of the show aired. So, fan theories can be decent, uh, but then there's some like this that aren't. And there's a little picture here, uh, which I can't see very well because it's like a YouTube video, but it's Vari's face photoshopped onto Ariel. From the little oh my god, I'm just... Okay, I'm so this is... Dying. Varys is a merman. Is Varys a mermaid? I'm just going to read this and then we'll pause and react to it. Uh, no, of course not. That's ridiculous. He could be a merman, though. No, wait. Don't go. There's actually quite a bit of, evi quite a bit of evidence to support this theory. As crazy as it sounds, I sure hope so. There's plenty of evidence to suggest that merfolk or Merlings as they are called, we have got to have that terminology right, exist in Westeros. Don't forget, this is already a land of zombies and dragons. I'm going to stop there. This is one of the things that drives me nuts when people start critiquing, uh, like when you, you know, you start talking about fantasy novels or something because like, you know, you say you're watching Lord of the Rings or something, you complain about some inconsistency or whatever in the plot or in something like Game of Thrones. Or, oh, so you can buy dragons, but you can't buy that Varys would get from Dorne to on the ships in two seconds? It's like, well, there's such a thing as internal consistency, <laughs> right? A fantasy world has different rules than our world, but it still has rules. So in Westeros, the rules are that there are dragons, but it still doesn't make sense. That doesn't mean that it, you just have Varys jump from point A to point B right. without, where, where that doesn't make any sense without any explanation. Read the nope. rest without, yeah. Okay. All right, so go. characters in Lannisport and Old Town claim to have seen Merlings. Strange black oily stone can be found all over the world, remnants of some underwater civilization. Okay. The Driftwood Throne of House Valerion is said to have come from the Merlings, and the Greyjoy Sea Stone Chair is made from the same mysterious black oily stone and is said to have been found already sitting on the Iron Islands when the first men set foot there. The legendary Winged Knight of the Vale is said to have had giants and Merlings amongst his friends, and well, we know the giants exist in Westeros. All right. So let me know when you're convinced. So there's a lot of evidence that Merlings exist, but why is Varys a Merlin? There's a popular fan theory started by a chap called Nightflyer that has been making the rounds that Varys is a Merlin, and it's a convincing one. Who is Varys? He's mysterious. I agreed. We don't really know anything about him or where he came from. All we do know is what he himself has told us. He's a master of secrets. He is a fat eunuch. Or is he? <laughs> Could be a manatee. Alright. So all this evidence. He has fins. 
evidence? Yeah, all this evidence is based on the books, so keep that in mind. Uh, Varys doesn't have a proper bed in his room. There's a, just a bed-shaped slab of stone that he uses as a secret passage. So where does he sleep? In the bath, presumably. Unless Merlings don't sleep. Vary's smile is described as slimy. He is bald. His body is large and lumpy. Almost fish-like. <laughs> That's a super big stretch. In A Clash of Kings, which is book two for those of you who are only show watchers, Tyrion threatens to have Varys thrown off a ship. Varys responds that he isn't worried about this at all, and that if Tyrion means to kill him by drowning him in the sea, that he's likely to be disappointed. Varys does say this to him, and the show, this is true. Oh. Says you might not like the result. Varys isn't worried about this death threat at all, for he would just swim away into the ocean. And this is the quote from A Clash of Kings. You might be disappointed by the result. I keep on paddling. Varys claims to be a eunuch with no bits down there, and of course Merlin folk would have no bits down there either. This story dissuades anyone from wanting to check out his junk, as well as deflecting, though maybe based on the way this show went tonight, yeah, <laughs> we might get there. Woman out there. As well as deflecting any suspicion for uh, lack of relationships. The perfect cover for a merman who is unable to procreate with humans. And of course, what if his story about being made a eunuch was genuine? After all, it happened in Myrrh. A clue if ever there was one. Right? In Myrrh. Uh, no. Myrrh. Okay. No. Varys claims his manhood was taken from him. Maybe that is literally true. Maybe the sorcerer took away his manhood, magically transforming him into a merman. Vari's body is large, and he wears long, flowing robes. It is the perfect disguise with which to hide a lower aquatic body. Okay? We've never seen Vari's feet, just the bottom of his robes as he glides along the ground. Who is Vari's ally? Illyrio. He's the fat guy who arranged Vari's, or did Danny's marriage in season one. Also described as a big, fat man who wears robes that cover his lower half. Also from Murr. Hmm. In A Game of Thrones, meaning the first book, when Arya overhears Varys and Illyrio plotting, something very interesting occurs. How do they get in and out of the underground catacomb, underground catacomb via a well? So we have another quote here. The man with the torch pushed at something. Arya heard a deep rumbling. A huge slab of rock, red in the torchlight, slid down out of the ceiling with a resounding crash that almost made her cry out. Where the entry to the well had been was nothing but stone, solid and unbroken. If Varys and Illyrio are both so big and fat, why do they go into the talk in a different, in a difficult to access location? Unless it is easy to access for merfolk. The only way out for Arya is to swim via the sewers and out into the nearby river. There's a whole network of waterways under King's Landing. What is difficult for a human to do is simple for a merman. So Varys and Illyrio are both merfolk from Myrrh. Is anyone else in on this? Well, don't forget Lord Manderley, a huge fat man with a taste for human flesh. What's his sigil? Oh, it's a merling, hiding in plain sight indeed. And what of Littlefinger? He claims to have some sort of hold over Varys, but he's not a big fat man. He can't possibly be a merling. Or can he? After all... Oh, please. His ship is called the Merlin King, and he comes from the Vale, whereas we see there have been Merlin incursions in the past. What is Vari's endgame, though? He's thrown his lot with the Targaryens. He and Illyrio have supplied Danny with dragon eggs, putting themselves firmly on the side of fire against the coming winter. But when summer comes, the ice must melt. Does Vari's plan on using the dragons to melt the wall and so flood Westeros? create more living space for the Merlings and supply a <laughs> of dead humans for them to feast upon. After all, once the sea level rises, very few places will be habitable by men, only a few high places, such as the Airy, where Littlefinger now rules. Littlefinger, the Merling King. Wow. That's, uh, 
I congratulate them on stretching that so well. You're not convinced? No, are you? Oh. No, not even a little bit. It just... Uh, yeah. The, the one quote from the book uh -huh. that they have is clearly not related to him throwing him overboard. Right. Like, it's clearly... You can throw me overboard, but I'm gonna keep going anyways. Like it's more just like, like a you motivation. Put me on a it's like a motivational. Tiger. Yeah, like that's fine. I'll walk away. Sorry, you don't believe. I when just, we get to episode seven of this season, and Bart is the bird, I did not realize we were taking everything quite so. I had never heard the part where he wants to melt the wall of the dragon. Yeah, oh that my was gosh! Pretty good. That's and that's like, wow. and that's why Littlefinger took over the eerie. Yes, so he'd be high up. So he'd be high up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, it just. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that that guy had that much time to pick out those. I want to find a new fan theory. Like, let's do one every week. <laughs> There's so many good. I know, but like, that's a really good one. We should do another really good yeah, one. Yeah, this is like room two three seven. Yeah, you know, two three those, seven. That's another idea. Yeah. yeah so, so for those of you who haven't seen this, there's a documentary on Netflix about uh, Kubrick's The Shining called Room 237 and it's just people who have watched The Shining about a hundred too many times and have just gone insane <laughs> at like they just have the most insane theories about The Shining uh, you know like they, it's Kubrick's confession for faking the moon landing right. it's, it's worth watching because uh, there is some interesting stuff, like about 25% of what they say is legit, but then it's like, there's Stanley Kubrick's face in the cloud! No. There, I got into an argument last night at a bonfire about Stanley Kubrick. Were you yeah. defending him for I me? I was! Alright! I know! That's which is wonderful. surprising because I've watched not very many yeah. you know, 2001 A Space Odyssey I was not defending, which we didn't talk about. Okay. But they just... Uh, Apparently, a lot of the scenes in, well, we were, we were talking about Stephen King and the Dark Tower that's coming out and how it's only one movie, but it was yes. a whole bunch of books, now yep. it's all going to work, and um, then we talked about um, how Stanley Kubrick had done the last Stephen King novel, The Shining. Yes. Right? And well, that's so, not his last well, novel. Well, not his last novel, yeah, I right. know, but like, um, he made the actors do there was they were listening to a podcast earlier that day and he had made the actors do like 160 yes. takes and the editor or somebody was on the podcast he's like we took the third take <laughs> yeah. and so like why did we have to do 162 if we took the third one to right. use and so we were having a debate like was Stanley Kubrick wearing them down so that they would just physically be worn down during the movie and it would just be that much more visible or was he actually a psychopath? Uh, <laughs> I, I think that there's a little bit to that in The Shining because I do think that in the case of Shelley Duvall who plays the wife in The Shining like, I do think that there's a lot of evidence that he was psychologically torturing her to affect she her She had to be institutionalized after that. <laughs> well, she was a little nutty before. <laughs> like she had some issues before, so she wasn't the 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 sanest. Uh, like all the, all the crackers were in the box, uh, but he was definitely pushing her. But I, it's more that for Kubrick, his genius was his ability to absorb information. Like he never made his Napoleon movie, but when he was researching Napoleon, he got to the point where he could tell you exactly what Napoleon was doing at any one day of his life. Because that was his ability to absorb just right. massive amounts of information. And so the whole thing with all these tons and tons of takes, it was like, just let's take all that we can. I want as much as I possibly can get. And just in case. Yes, his, his genius was that ability to just, there was no limit to what he could. Like, for most of us, it's like you get too many options and you feel overwhelmed. Right. Kubrick's genius was that he didn't have that limit. Right. It was just... There's a, a really interesting 30-minute documentary uh, that you can find online called Kubrick's Boxes. And it's just a guy went to his estate and just these boxes that he had of all his research. And 
you know, he, he, like when he was going to film uh, Eyes Wide Shut and he wanted to have a shot in front of a certain door and so he sent people out to New York to just photograph doors and doors and doors and doors and just tons yeah. of stuff. The yeah. one door he wanted. Right, and you know, Eyes Wide Shut has the world record for the longest consecutive film shoot in history. He had Tom, uh, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman had to sign open-ended contracts. They basically said, we will be available to you for as long as you want to have us. And it's not some complex movie where you have to, you know, have all the stunts and everything. It's just uh, the famous story from Eyes Wide Shut is uh, Sidney Pollack. I've probably told you this one before, but it's, it's Sidney Pollack uh, is in it. And there's a scene where he gets up and he opens the door and Tom Cruise comes into the room. And he said, well, he said to Stanley Kubrick, well, uh, how do you want me to do this scene? And Kubrick said, well, just do it till it feels right. And Sidney Pollack had flown over to England for this. And he was expecting to be back in America the next week. Right. And he did it, and he did it, and he did it, and he did it. It's like a week later, and he finally says to Kubrick, I think it feels right. He goes, I was waiting for you when you figure that out. <laughs> they took 200 takes on this, and just walking up, opening the door, and letting Tom Cruise into the room. <laughs> it's just oh this God. crazy level of... Jeez. And there, it's, you know, it's not like the shiny wasn't trying to torture uh, Sidney Pollack, it's just he had this amazing ability to absorb everything. You know, when he, he was doing Barry Lyndon, he wanted, Barry Lyndon set in the 17th century, I believe, and he wanted to have music from exactly that time, because he rarely had commissioned music, so he wanted to have music from that time. Well, he eventually decided not to, but only after listening to every piece of music from the 17th century yes. until he decided that none of them were going to work for what he wanted to do. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah. But isn't that... that's... psychopath almost. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, there's a, it's not normal behavior. No, it's certainly not. But nobody who's a genius has normal behavior. Genius, a genius by definition, I think, is somebody who does not fit into normal society. Like, you know, normal society has millions of rules, written and unwritten, that we all have to abide by. And part of what makes somebody a, a genius is their ability to break that and navigate that in such a way where they can construct a meaningful life outside of those rules. Right. And in a sense, you don't... Like the, part of the temptation is to say, well, let's tear down the rules so that we can have more geniuses. No, because part of the genius is being able to live amidst those rules and break all of them. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I mean, yeah, it's psychopath, whatever it is, it's, you know, whether it, he would be autistic or something, probably he's on the spectrum somewhere. I'm sure he was <laughs> pretty, pretty far on the spectrum, yes. But yeah, it's just, that's what genius is. That it's not normal behavior. It is psychopathic. It's it's like the, the C.S. Lewis quote where he says that in Screw Tape Letters that the great saints are cut from the same cloth of the great sinners. He means that in a moral sense, but I think it's true. And the like, how many people wear the Einsteins, the Stanley Kubricks, and all that? You just change a couple wires in them, and they're out there murdering people and wearing their bodies. Right. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. it's like. I, I, I honestly think that so many of the geniuses are that close to being right. Charles Manson or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's a fine line. Right. You know, one thing's different in Charles Manson, and we're revering him as the, the savior of mankind of the 21st century. Right, he, he like cures cancer. <laughs> exactly, or exactly, yeah. exactly. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Now, Kubrick was, I mean, that. His work is just like that. You can talk for two hours yeah. about Kubrick, yeah. Yeah, I have. No, <laughs> I know you have. I'm sure you've talked many, many hours about him. Yes. Um, any other? I don't know. We'll have to come up with a, a new thing. Well, this was tinfoil fan, fan hat theories, so... Or tin tin foil hat hat I mean, tinfoil so. hat theories, I mean... Doesn't get much more obscure than that, so... The problem with the crazy fan theory. It's similar to the problem of uh, the crazy conspiracy theory, but it's a little worse because, like, the crazy conspiracy theory, you're relying on 
a thousand things working and meaning exactly one thing. Right. But the world is so big with so many possibilities that there's just the off chance you're right. But when you deal with a fan theory, you're dealing, you're, it, there isn't that many you're possibilities. So exactly, because it's like, right. you, for that theory to be correct, George R. R. Martin would have to be looking at everything in the exact same way that you are looking at everything. Mm -hmm. That doesn't right. work. Right. Yeah. But. But, I mean, at least that fan theory, however, you know, obscure and not true it seems, at least that person did, like, go through the effort of trying to put some together some evidence, and it's not like some of these things that you read where they're just like, oh, blah, 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 right. I decided this. Like, right. Yeah. It, it does make it a good theory to at least have yeah. clues. There was effort. Yeah. Right. But, I mean, that, that, that's also part of the problem with modern fantasy novels where you have these five, six year breaks between novels is, you know, you have the rabid fans and they don't have anything new to consume, mm -hmm. so you just read the same book and by the time But that's part of engaging with the text a lot too for... For the first dozen or so times, well, the next yeah, 200 okay. times you read the book, eventually <laughs> you go insane. Right. You Which, can just make it say whatever you want it to say. Exactly. Right. To bring it full circle to room two, three, seven, like that's the genius. It's like you get the sense of not, I mean, The Shining is in my top ten of all time. I love the movie, but you get the sense that these are people who like watched this movie a thousand times and they've just slowly gone insane watching The Shining. It's like you need to stop watching The Shining. This is not good for you. We can bring it all back to the Bible and go full Catholic on it if you want. There you go. <laughs> Protestants are just weird fan theories. <laughs> I like it. Uh, right. Anything else? I don't think Mer so. people, not real. If that comes out to be true, uh, I yes. will. I will drink the full last. Mexican cerveza downstairs. Right, so for, well, let me just tease that before we wrap up, because there might be some people who, who are new. Uh, so I, when I first got into home brewing, I bought a product called Mr. Beer, which you should not buy, because it's terrible. That's, if you're like, I want to make beer for the very first time ever, and I don't have anything, and I just want to try it, Go to go, go, go buy one of the one gallon kits or something like that. No, but then you have to buy. I mean, that's like hundreds of dollars to do all that. If you're just like, I just want to try it and see what it's like. You buy a Mr. Beer kit, you try it, you go. That was like a that Bud was Light. okay. That was like a Bud Light, and then you go out and buy the right. hundreds of dollars worth of stuff. Exactly. Okay, so I bought Mr. Beer, and then we had the. Uh, Mexican cerveza, uh, it was a jalapeno cerveza kit. Yes. So I Not chopped up jalapenos cerveza. and I put them in there. And so this was, it was disgusting, you know, when I, I finished it, but I, I bottled it all up. So I've got my little crawl space under the stairs and everything. And I actually have, maybe we should open up a few different things because I know I have some other batches that were okay. Oh my God. Uh, at the time. Uh, so this uh, was... We'll open them, that's fine. Yeah, 2012, so five years ago, I made uh, I Mr. Beer even... Cerveza. So I call it Senior Cerveza, because it's Mr. Beer, right? <laughs> so all you can smell is that, like, everything's gone but the jalapeno at this point. And yeah, so... Well, yeah, that must have been three years ago that I had it last, because I wasn't here right. last year, and I was pregnant. Last year we I, just I, smelled it. I'm not sure I can even let you it smell it nasty. this year. I don't want anything yeah, bad to happen to the baby. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's it's not, I smelled it. Yeah, <laughs> so, Senior was your base. Uh, so last year, it, I, I was a little disappointed when you saw it, because after I put it in the fridge, it all calmed down, but when I pulled out the crawl space, there was like a a world, there's a tornado going on in the, uh, <laughs> which is not what's supposed to happen with five-year-old beer. Or maybe it is what, you're not supposed to have five-year-old beer. <laughs> no, you are. It's like a bourbon barrel pour. Yes. So I have, five -year -old beer. I have Sierra Nevada's Bigfoot Barley Wine. Yes. Which I have heard is best at five years. Yes. So I've been buying that every year for the last few years. Right. And I drink a bottle or two just to see how it is. Right. That, that'll be 
five, but that's not, you don't save Mexican beer for five years. Especially no. not from a Mr. Beard. <laughs> Especially not when you put jalapenos in it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Just, it, it, so we're going to open that up here. I have uh, two more bottles left. And Ben will drink and one if left. the wall and gets melted down no, and no, all no, the world no. If he like lifts up his thing and all of a sudden there's a fin there, <laughs> then done, sold. I'll go to the hospital, whatever it takes, I'll drink that, that's fine. Uh, Last shot of the show will be, thanks Danny, I'm going back to my, my people. He'll wink at her, dive into the sea. <laughs> it, okay, yes. I'm going to throw a little fuel on this fire. So when they caught up to the books, they said there were two things that absolutely shocked them that George R. R. Martin told them about, because they went and had, they locked Martin in a hotel room with them. And right, they're like, the listen, show. we need to know the big plot yes. points so that we don't There's screw two. this up. One was Hodor from last season. They said the second is in the final episode. Murder. No, 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 no! I believe Ravaris is a Murram! <laughs> you heard it here first! Like, that's going to be the thing that's revealed in the final episode. He will lift just up his, the final a, shot as far as diving into the water. Just like, God, I mean, talk about jumping the shark. I mean, <laughs> Jesus. It'll be a completely satisfying ending. Varys will dive into the water. What the fuck just happened? That's not going to be the one that's the final not. shot of the show. It's not going to be it. No, it's not. It's going to be the final line of the last book. Brand. Yeah. No, it's going to be like at the very last second. Like in like those thriller movies nowadays. It's like, we won! And then at the very last second, like something really bad happens and like the leader gets killed. So it's like, like John and Danny will be standing on top of the wall and they'll be like, we defeated them! And then all of a sudden, one last ice dagger is going to go through one of their hearts. Or something like that. It's going to be something like that. But that's just... not a big revelation. They yeah, said it was they a big revelation. Like, totally exactly. That's it's not a big... That's a plot enough. twist. Not a big revelation. That's not like it's Hodor. That is something like totally unexpected. Yeah. Like, that's like, oh no, Hodor just died. Hodor is Hodor well, maybe because it's, of time travel. Well, what if it's Bran is actually the three-eyed raven the whole time? Ah, we all saw that coming. Nobody, there's there's got to be something nobody ah. sees coming except that guy. No, there's some people is that Hodor. saw Hodor coming. <laughs> Didn't you see that not story many. last year? Yeah. Yeah. But, but not that like that. that. Nobody saw it. Like that. So Varys will dive into the water in the final shot of the show. <laughs> And you will, and you I will, will chug the Mr. Beer, and then you will call in sick for the next two weeks. And you'll probably die. <laughs> well, we don't, I don't see yeah. him surviving. Hopefully it's, hopefully it's the summer. <laughs> right. Well, you know. Yeah. Do some CGI beer, like the Beer Fest movie. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm totally drinking this beer. <laughs> <laughs> that one. All right, All right. Anyway. Yeah, so after show, so we don't need to All sign right. off. Bye. <laughs>